Ladies, my name is Alicia Haskett. I'm the owner of O Experience Blue Dwarf Photography, and this is a day in the life for me. I'm dying my hair, and I want to talk. So, dying my hair. Um, what is this? Honey blonde, and then here's the box. And let me keep doing this before I say one thing, and then that looks crazy. Uh, my hair is short as you can see but I wanted to talk about something that I keep seeing on my feed recently which is people talking about feminism not feminism but being feminine and how it's being weaponized against black women and I say it's being weaponized against black women because I see so many femininity coaches popping up it almost seems like when they were all these dating coaches like Derek J or Derek Jacks or whatever the hell his name is um, and the Kevin Samuels of the world who are still out and about. But it was a lot of, you know, if you need to get a man, a man, a quality man, a high value man, this is what you have to do. And this is how you should act. And this is what you should have. And I keep seeing that now for the women. I keep seeing for the black women. And a lot of their stuff, as we know, was geared towards black women. Because I feel like black women want to have relationship advice and they're getting it from people who really have no skin in the game when it comes to wanting them to be happy wanting them to love themselves so now we have these femininity coaches who are showing you how to get a man by being feminine which is crazy to me because femininity has so many different varying levels to it and whatever your chosen way of being feminine is, is the right way. You can't learn from someone how to be feminine. But for some reason, that's all I keep seeing up and down my feet. And it's crazy to me because people are paying big ass amounts of money to deal with a femininity coach. And I see it a lot of times tied to the church. And I'm seeing like, this is how you have to be. This is what you have to do. This is how you have to... Oh, shit. Okay. Gonna use this. This is how you have to be. This is, I'm gonna use this to see the back of my head. Oh, I need to do a lot over here. Okay. Um, this is how you have to be. This is how you have to act if you are actively trying to be in a relationship because men don't want this. And I know for a fact, I've been told that in a relationship, um, not in a relationship, but just talking to men in general. And most of the men I deal with are black men. Actually, all the men I deal with have been black men. Um, that black men want a feminine woman. They don't want anybody that they have to compete with. So I'm going to talk about So it says to leave this on. Hold on. I'm going to leave this on for uh, 10, 15 minutes. And then I'm going to actually, I think I did that wrong. Okay, no. All right, I'm going to press start and I'm going to just use this and keep talking. But anyway, um, I see it so many times where people are saying black women are not feminine enough. Black women are not this black women. Are not. I really want them to shut the fuck up. I really want them to be quiet. And I really want black women, even if it's other black women telling you what you are or what you are not, I really need them to be quiet. And I want them to be quiet because you are able to be any version of yourself that you want to be. And I learned that lesson the hard way, and now I'm trying to learn it the easier way. But I've learned that there are so many people who are not vested in you being happy and healthy and whole. And because they are not happy, healthy, and whole, they want you to suffer in the same way that they are suffering. They want you to be in a loveless marriage. They want you to be in a marriage where every day is a struggle for you to even get up and try to live your life because you're so vested in this person and what they're doing. And I see that because a lot of my clients now who are in their late 40s or in their 50s 
are divorced. And a lot of the conversations we have are about, I'm doing this for myself. I am doing this because I'm so excited that now I get to worry about me. I get to focus on me. And I'm just like, well, why couldn't you focus on you before? Like, what was the, what was the reason why you couldn't focus on you before? And I find that for black women, I see that happening a lot where if they are in relationships, if they are married, they feel like they can't focus on themselves because we've been taught that having a man is like up here and everything else is down here. He is the leader. He is the head of the household, even if you are just dating. And I think that's crazy because if you are in a space where your partner this is, could be heterosexual relationships um, or anything on the spectrum in between. If your partner does not want to see you as the best version of you, why are you with them? If that person doesn't want you to feel like you are the most, one of the most important people in their life because they should be the first, and then you, if that's the relationship you have, then that's a problem. It's a problem because if you have to dumb yourself down, if you have to make sure that you are not the brightest star to yourself and you have to dim your shine to make your partner feel like they are the best, they are the most important, that's the problem because you're going to start to resent that person. And then you start getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until there's nothing left of you because you've given so much of yourself. And I see that constantly when I'm talking to my clients. And I see it constantly when I'm talking to my clients because they tell me I'm now, it comes up so many times, I'm doing this for me. I'm doing this for me. I always hear that, I'm doing this for me. And when I was starting out, I would always ask them a question like, describe yourself in three words. What are three adjectives, three words that describe who you are right now? I, a lot of the times, the words I've gotten are, I'm a mom, um, sometimes wife. I would have, um, I am a servant. I am, um, what's one that always came up? I don't know. That's the one that always came up. I don't know. I'm a mom. And then other than that, I don't know. And then I would say, okay, well, how do you want to feel after your session? What would make sense for you? And then it was, I want to feel beautiful. I want to feel empowered. I want to feel like I matter. I want to feel sexy. And I always would think to myself, so if you want to feel this way for this experience, this boudoir experience, how can you take that and translate it to your life every day? How can you feel sexy? How can you feel beautiful in your everyday life? And a lot of times I think what happens is we try to put that on our partners to make us feel that way. And yes, they should do that. I agree because that's why you're with them, one part. But also you need to take the onus on of making yourself feel that every day. So for me, right now, that's dyeing my hair. I'm going to see how it turns out. I don't know. But it's doing something different. Something to make me feel good. Something to bring me pleasure. This is bringing me pleasure. Hopefully. I don't know. But I always ask my clients, you know, what is it that brings you pleasure? If I asked you for in a day of your life, what would be the one day if you could do anything that you wanted to do? that will bring you pleasure, that will make you smile, what would it be? And I asked that question because that's a part of the pre-experience uh, questionnaire that they get right before they come in. Because when we have these conversations, I want to bring those things out of them. And I ask them questions, especially I have my, my client yesterday. Um, for her, she talked about, you know, I'm the most happiest when I'm traveling. So we talked about her travel and I asked her, you know, where was the last place you've gone? And then I asked her, where was the place that you went to where you felt seen? 
Like you felt like I could stay here and live in this place. And it was such an amazing thing to see because her face brightened. She seemed to relax because she was thinking about this place that she had gone and how it just impacted her. And she said that. She was like, you know, I went, I think it was it was Bali. She said, you know, I went to Bali and I went to this, this one location in Bali and I felt so just loved. The people knew my name as I was walking there. I think she was there for maybe like nine days or something. And she was like, it felt like... I was seen, it felt like they were vested in me as a person. And that is something that I've never experienced anywhere outside of that location when it goes like on a trip. And I was like, that's what I want for my clients. That's what you should have every day. Like that's what you should be able to, to tap into every day. What are those feelings, those pleasures that, that allow you to see yourself instead of trying to say, I want to be feminine and not understanding what that means for you and getting a coach and that coach can tell you what it means for them. They may have, you know, a whole list of things that you can do to be feminine, but how does it relate to you? Like, how are you paying this person thousands of dollars, hundreds of dollars to tell you how to be feminine, to tell you how to live your life? I don't, I don't get it. And I see it so often now. And it was like, black women can't catch a break when it comes to those type of things. All right, let me just see what's going on. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, okay. I'm a little nervous, but we're going to see, we're going to see how much time I have left before I put Okay, I have like six minutes, so I'm going to start getting my gloves ready. I love when my clients come in and they have an epiphany where they're like, damn, like, I really look good. I really love my body, especially for my moms, because when my moms come in and they get to see themselves outside of just being a mom or a wife or a partner, and then they look at themselves and it's like, damn, I miss, I'm, I've missed this. I miss dressing up. I miss looking good. Um, especially when they get the wall art. And I always try to talk people into getting what my middle package, you could either get a 16 by 24 or eight by 10. And so for the middle package, um, I always try to tell the women go up to a 16 by 24. Because when you go up and you see yourself every day on your wall, you get to relive that experience. And not only do you get to relive that experience, it's like a breath of fresh air when you are in that space where you're not quite feeling like yourself. But then you remember, damn, I did that. And then you look at yourself and it's like, I still, I got it. I got, no, nah, I still got it out, but always had it. And this is exactly why I always had it. Because look at this picture. I mean, and sometimes they, you know, they want to do the eight by tens, which is still good because you still get to see yourself. But I always say go big, like go big. When I did my boudoir session um, in 2017 or 18, I don't remember off the top of my head, my first, my very first one, um, I took those pictures I've got them framed. I have four of them. One of them is in the studio space where uh, people get dressed. And then the other three are in my bed, my bedroom. And I love them because there are moments where, even for me, I don't feel myself. I don't feel beautiful. Like you can see right now, my skin is going through craziness. I don't feel beautiful. I don't feel connected to myself. But when I look at those pictures, I look at them and I feel connected to me again. I feel like, damn, like I did that. I did that. I made a sheet look good. I, you know, did these poses and I feel connected to myself. I feel connected to my, my womanhood, my femininity, um, even to my masculinity. I feel connected to all of that because all of that is within me. 
And so when I hear people just focus on the feminine side of women, I think, especially, like I said, for black women, whoops, that is a bad thing to do. That is a horrible thing to do because black women are so much more and our femininity when it comes to being a black woman, oops, I put the wrong glove on the wrong hand, has never been like our white counterparts. It's just never been. Because our sexuality, when it comes to us being this, I don't even know. I know I, I hear, I see it a lot when I would travel and um, people thinking that black women are prostitutes because that's what they see in the media. They see us being hyper-sexualized and that is what we always see. And so this level of like being feminine and trying to step away from that and moving into this space of, I am dainty, I am this. And not saying there are black women who are that, that's, that's who they are, but for everyone to be washed in this, I am this feminine damsel in distress, help me please. It don't work for everybody. It don't work for me. And so to sell this to black women as the way to get this thing that they want, it doesn't make sense to me. That's all I'm saying. It don't make sense. But I'm going to switch gears and I want to talk about why I got about a minute and 24 seconds. Why boudoir? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm nervous, but I'm not. Okay. Okay. We'll see what happens. I'm nervous. Anyway. Um, uh, let me check the back. Oh, my goodness. All right. Oh, shit. I didn't do that whole side. How the hell? <laughs> uh, all right. So this whole side is not... Okay, I probably sh sh damn sure should have had somebody help me. Let me check this side. Let me check this side out. Uh, okay. All right. No worries. We're going to... They're going to work it out. Oh, shit. Okay. Um. Anyway... We're going to see what happens. I do like the color, though. Like, I feel like it's cute. Um, okay, good. I have 18 seconds. I feel like it's really cute. Let me reset. And I'm going to put this damn show on the back of my head. Lord Jesus. Okay. And let's put this on my scalp. And hope that this works out um but yeah uh what was i gonna say yeah i was talking about why black women should do a boudoir experience i think that when black women do boudoir experiences it allows them to tap into a side of themselves that we have always been told we can't connect with because someone tells us how we should connect with it when it becomes to our bodies. And that's a problem for me because I know that for me, when I was in my thirties, when I am like, I'm not in my thirties now, I feel like I'm old, but when I connected with myself, I was in my 30s because I had gotten a divorce and I was with my partner from 18 to 30. Oh shit, hold on. I'm gonna mess up my floor. Ugh. From 18 to 30. And everything I knew about myself, about my body, was wrapped up in how this person connected with my body. And that is also how it is for a lot of black women, especially black women who are connected with the church, because a lot of the times what we are told 
is that your partner is going to tell you how to deal with your body. Your partner is going to tell you what feels good. Your partner is going to tell you how you should interact with sex. And if you are this person who wants to be the sex person, the sex goddess or whatever the hell you want to do, your partner has to give you that. But the problem is with that, if that person has no idea what they're doing, now both of y'all look foolish, right? So one thing that I really want black women to start doing is to honor themselves, to honor their bodies. I know sometimes when I have clients come in and I tell them to touch their bodies, it's like, you want me to do what? I'm like, touch your breasts. Get connected with your body. Touch all of those parts of yourself so you can get connected with what it means to be you. And that's really what I want for my, my clients. Like, touch yourself. Understand that your body is beautiful. Understand that your body belongs to you. Your body belongs to no one else. You can share it with others, but your body belongs to you. It's the same thing like we tell little kids. Like you have body autonomy. And I think that's something that a lot of black women don't realize because we, even though I didn't grow up in the church like that, but I have a lot of friends who did. They have a lot of challenges with understanding that. They have a lot of challenges with understanding what that looks like for them. How do I connect with myself if I've always been told that my body belongs to one, my father first, and then it belongs to my husband? And I want us to get out of that space. I want us to understand that your body always, when you came out the womb, belonged to you always belong to you. It never belonged to anyone else. Ever. Ever, ever. Oh man, I'm nervous. I am dead ass nervous right now. I'm sorry, I had to see my dirty mirror because my hands, but. But it's just hair. So the way I feel is if I don't like it, I can <laughs> I can cut it. That's how I feel. If I don't like it, I can cut it. We're going to see. I'll be back. So this is what it looks like. I'm not mad at it. I think I should have used the, the little boost packet that came in it. But it's, it's okay. Like, it's okay. I'll wait a few weeks and then I don't want to fry it. But I'll see if I can get it later.